Welcome back to the Grow Your Nutrition Business Podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Coyne, founder of Healthy Steps Nutrition, CrossFit HSN, and HSN Mentoring, where we believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated. Is nutrition the missing piece in your business? Gyms opening up after COVID are seeing an intake in new members at their gyms, which is amazing. These people are motivated to lose weight and take control of their health. The problem is when you don't make nutrition a priority, they are not going to make it a priority and they're not going to see the results they're looking for. But if you instead package your offerings, especially your intake offerings to incorporate nutrition and fitness together on day one, you will be able to provide the best solution to help your clients achieve their goals and solve the problem that they came in to solve. Most gym owners are not experts in nutrition, let alone how to set up a nutrition program, price it, package it, and deliver it. We have a solution for you. On Friday, July 10th, HSN Mentoring is hosting the Nutrition Business Virtual Workshop. This is a one-day event that will consist of presentations, application, and breakout sessions led by the HSN Mentoring leadership team to apply all this information. Have you ever gone to a conference and then listened to all this information, you were super excited about it, but then by the time you got back into the whirlwind of your business, you weren't really able to apply it? In the Nutrition Business Virtual Workshop, you will walk away with a clear, actionable plan to help you run your business. There's an owner's track and a coach's track. Tickets are on sale now. The pre-sale cost is only $169, but the price is gonna go up on July 1st, so you wanna lock in your ticket today. Today's guest on the podcast is actually going to be presenting during the Nutrition Business Virtual Workshop. Ashley Osterman is our Director of Nutrition Education. In this episode, we discuss mindfulness, intuitive eating, and habit-based coaching. On June 1st, we released an entire Master Habits course for all of HSN Mentoring clients. This had brand new client resources for our coaches to use. As a nutrition coach, you want to feel confident helping your clients on their nutrition journey and having more tools in your toolbox allows you to do that. Enjoy. Ashley Osterman, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you, Nicole. Always great to be here. Not too long ago, we did a podcast episode on three steps to adding nutrition coaching that we released in May because so many gyms were using nutrition as their retention strategy when their physical locations were closed. Yeah, you know, we got some really great feedback on that. And I really think that people really saw the value, especially, you know, then and now more than ever of having nutrition as a core offering in your business. And, you know, so many gyms use that as their retention strategy. And now gyms are reopening, which is amazing. Our gym reopened. We had 15 new members in the first two and a half weeks. It was, it was awesome. And more and more gyms are saying that, like we're having a massive uptake in new people. And these people are really looking for help taking control of their health. And right now, if you're offering them an option to get started with nutrition and fitness, you're able to help them achieve their goals so much faster. Yeah. I mean, we, we always talk about how important it is for your health and your lifestyle to have nutrition as a, a core foundation in your healthy habits. And, you know, abs are really made in the kitchen. You can't out exercise a bad diet. Absolutely. As a CrossFit affiliate owner, you know, people are coming to you thinking that they just need to work out really hard to see the results, but you have to guide them to the solution that's going to solve their problem. You're going to have to help them with nutrition and fitness if you really want to help them see the best results possible. Absolutely. Ashley, you've been so busy the past couple months. And one of the things that we had been working on is this master habits course. And you've been working on it so much. Uh, We released it June 1st. Oh yes. It's such an awesome course. I've already gotten so much feedback from our nutrition coaches and our owners about that. They're so excited to utilize these resources and strategies and implement them into their nutrition coaching tools. Absolutely. And you know, I, we started talking about, you know, what could another podcast episode be to help nutrition coaches who aren't using the platform? Like, man, we just did all this stuff with mindfulness, intuitive eating, building healthy habits. Like let's kind of do a big picture overview of, of what were the core topics discussed in the master habits course and how are we utilizing all of these things to help build nutrition coaches. So let's get started. First topic in this master habits course was mindfulness. 
Yes, mindfulness. And this is honestly something that I've actually been practicing more and more in my personal life. You know, mindfulness, you might have heard that term before. People think of mindful eating or bringing mindfulness to your daily routine. But really, the practice of mindfulness involves paying attention and, and being present in the moment experience, you know, with purpose and also non judgmentally. So, in other words, mindfulness is the basic human ability to be fully present and to be aware of where we are and what we're doing, as well as not being overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's going on or the noise around us. I would say as a CrossFit affiliate owner, there's been a bit of noise and super, you know, we had to be super reactive really quickly. But if you take a second to, to slow down and just be present, like you're saying, you're able to enjoy eating so much more. You have a better relationship with food. Absolutely. And even when it comes to, you know, negative situations such as stressors, if we actually take that time and take that moment to breathe, process what's going on, and then instead of just reacting or, you know, kind of doing that autopilot that we normally do, you might see that there is a lot of different possibilities to move forward with that situation. Absolutely. Let's dive into mindfulness a little bit. You talked about the four core elements of mindfulness. What are those and what do they mean? Yeah. So when we're talking about mindfulness, there are four core elements that um, we discuss when practicing mindfulness. The first one is awareness. Mindful awareness means being fully aware and tuned into what's going on right now in the present moment. Like I was saying, it's so easy to get caught in autopilot in this world. You know, we relive past events or we're planning for the future. We really don't take time to just stop and be present and think about what's happening right now. So mindful awareness involves um, returning to the present moment, the only time that you can actually be in that moment, and it centers upon accepting each moment fully as it is, you know, which this can actually lead to a greater sense of peace and actually help us when dealing with unpleasant situations. The second core element of mindfulness is attention. So when we think of attention, I like to think of concentration. So taking all of the energy, all of the noise, all of the scattered attention and settle and center it. Um, I think when we talk about concentration too, we really look at steadying and focusing our attention because being distracted wastes our energy and concentration aims to restore it. So that's the second core element of mindfulness. Third is just to be present. So there are a lot of ways that we can be present and bring mindfulness into our daily life, even when we don't have a chance to sit down in a quiet place. And that's called the art of being present. So bringing mindfulness into your daily activities, your routines, and to triggers. So something that might normally set us off like a mindless driver or a um, hurtful comment, instead of just reacting with anger or you know a negative energy, we're going to stop, think about that, and replace that with being present. And finally is cultivation or developing. So mindfulness is just like any type of exercise. If to get good at it, you're going to have to practice it consistently, right? We don't just go into the gym and start squatting 300 pounds. We have to slowly build up to that. So practicing mindfulness consistently and making sure that, you know, we are going to bring it into both our daily routines in our life and our relationships. So much stuff to think about. You know, at the end of the day, we're really just talking about paying attention to what we're doing, slowing down and helping our clients realize, look at all factors. Yeah. Right? You know, it's not, you go to a mental health counselor because you want an outside perspective. And when you are mindful, you can sometimes see the outside perspective really yeah. well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. People, a lot, a lot of times who practice mindfulness and really get into it, they talk about, you know, being outside of themselves and looking in from a different point of view, which is what we're able to do when we take that time and that breath and slow down instead of just auto reacting. So one of the great tools that we've given our um, mentoring clients is a stress management worksheet. We call it mindful stress management. And it's an awesome worksheet that they could use with their clients to kind of go through when we're having a stressor in our life. So they can go through the worksheet, looking at social support, looking at their emotional needs, and then practicing stopping for stress management. So slowing down, taking a breath, observing what's happening, and then proceeding, considering multiple possibilities. That stress management worksheet is really awesome. And, you know, I think for a lot of people, stress management looks different for everybody. A lot of people like yoga, that actually stresses me out more. <laughs> Some people it's journaling, some people it's just sitting with a cup of coffee in silence, whatever it looks like trying to work with your client to figure out 
what's going to work best for them. Yeah. And sometimes it's even just talking to a friend or a family member, you know, getting that stress out in a constructive way and just having someone listen to you and offer a different point of view. So one of the things we talked about with mindfulness was chewing your food more. Oh my goodness. So I'm sure you guys have heard of mindful eating. There's a lot of really great starting practices that you can do to make sure we're eating more mindfully and not just shoveling the food into our face and running off to our next activity. So yeah, taking the time, actually enjoying your food, chewing your food at least 15 times. I know this might sound crazy, but you really want to make sure that you're chewing the food to the point where you start to reflexively swallow. Another thing that we talk about too when it comes to mindful eating is taking sips of water in between your bites, putting the fork down in between your bites and eating without distraction. You know, it's so easy to be looking at your phone or your computer or a book or a TV show while you're eating, but then it really takes your mind away from what you're doing. And that's actually enjoying your meal and making sure that we are experiencing the food as we should and being mindful and thankful for the food. Absolutely. I was super surprised when we started, after we did the webinar, I sat down and we ate dinner and I really chewed my food 15 times. There is no way, nor we, there's no way we usually do that. No. And you can actually enjoy it more, so much more. One of the things that you had me do, and we challenged all of the nutrition coaches to do, is the Raisin Experiment. Yes, the Raisin Experiment. Talk to our listeners about the Raisin Experiment. Such a great way to integrate mindfulness. Yeah, you know, it's actually taking something that we all have probably experienced before, a raisin, but experiencing it for the first time. So one of the attitudes of mindfulness is called a beginner's mind. So it's really leaving all of your past associations with whatever we're looking at, in this case, a raisin. So leaving those past associations with a raisin behind and having a beginner's mind when we're experiencing it. So we're taking this one raisin, just one. I know normally we like to throw a handful of raisins in our mouth and chew and swallow, but just one raisin and experiencing it for the first time. Like you're not from this world and you just got dropped in this planet and there's this tiny little object in front of you touching it, looking at it, smelling it, slowly putting it to your lips, putting it in your mouth, rolling it around, then slowly chewing to the point where you reflexively swallow, and then actually taking the time and thinking about what just happened in your body and what are you feeling? You might feel a little energy. You might feel the want, the need or want to have more. Um, so it's just some really interesting and mind opening experiment that you can do. And you guys, if you're out there and you're like, I want to try that, go ahead and Google it. It's really cool. It'll tell you all the steps to do. You can do it with any small piece of fruit or nut. Um, definitely a very cool experiment and a way to relate mindfulness. Absolutely. And even doing that with your clients would be a, a really great strategy too, like doing it in the office. Oh yeah. All right. So we've really nailed down mindfulness. Anything else you want to talk about before we move on to intuitive eating? Nope, just, you know, when it comes to mindfulness, it's not just mindfully eating. You can apply mindfulness in all areas of your life. And I think all of us can benefit from a little more mindfulness. Absolutely. All right. The next topic, such a popular one, intuitive eating. Oh my goodness. Yes. I'm sure you guys have heard this before. And there's a lot of um, misconception about what this term actually means. I can't tell you how many times I've heard, oh, intuitive eating means I can just eat whatever I want. My body wants a tray of brownies. I'm going to have a tray of brownies. But in fact, intuitive eating is, is not about that. Intuitive eating is about regaining your natural cues of fullness and hunger with your body, tuning into how your body feels before you eat, while you're eating and after you're eating and understanding that this is a process that we're, we're working through to really realign our natural hunger and fullness cues and how our body actually feels after we fuel it appropriately. So eating that whole tray of brownies would actually not be intuitive eating because you're going to feel pretty bad after that. However, intuitive eating does allow you to have a treat every now and then if that's what you like. You have it and you move on. So when we talk about intuitive eating, I think the biggest thing that I hear from clients who want to talk about it is that I just, I, you know, I hear intuitive eating. I've tried all these diets. Nothing seems to work for me. I feel like intuitive eating is something I can do without any rules or restrictions. But I think our role as a nutrition coach is really to educate them about what it is and really helping them tune back into those hunger and fullness cues. So let's talk about it. Hunger and fullness cues. You know, what, what does that really look like for clients? What does it look like for us? Well, I have to say, I think most of us are not in tune with our hunger and fullness cues. Unfortunately, it's just a byproduct of our, you know, 
growing up, honestly. Have you ever been at a table eating with your family and you can't leave until you finish your plate? Or have you ever been told you have to finish all of your broccoli to have a dessert? Or have you ever gotten in trouble for eating an entire package of cookies? Well, that's taking away from our natural hunger and fullness cues. We're slowly starting to suppress those. And then also from dieting, years of dieting and restricting also suppresses those cues. So I think it's safe to say that most of us don't even know when we're actually hungry. The point of being hungry where our stomach is growling and we're having those pains or feeling nauseous or lightheaded, you're already way past your natural cue. You're into the almost overeating hunger cues at that point. So Intuitive eating is a great practice that you can utilize with your clients to help them tune back in and find their natural patterns of hunger and fullness. Really, again, bringing mindfulness to what we're doing. I think it's also important to note that hunger cues, we're talking about hunger cues, not all hunger cues actually are manifested in the stomach. And I think it's different for everybody. I might experience hunger cues as having loss of focus or having a headache, where you might experience a slight growling in your stomach or feeling a little bit anxious. So actually being able to sit down and tune back into those cues are going to help us be more intuitive as an eater. And the same thing goes for fullness cues. You know, how many times have we gone out to eat, had a wonderful dinner with our friends or family, and as you're walking out the door, it hits you you are too full. Stomach's getting round, you have to unbutton those pants, like Thanksgiving dinner full. So at that point, you've eaten far past your fullness cue. So taking the time as you're eating to check in with yourself and see how we're feeling, see if we have a slight roundness to the stomach, if the empty feeling is starting to become full again, and tuning back into that will help you become intuitive as an eater. I see it working with clients all the time. They think if they skip meals, they're going to lose weight, right? And then they end up skipping meals all day and then they overeat at night um, and they're so hungry and they binge eat essentially at night because they're trying to make up for everything that they missed out on during the day. And then you end up eating and craving foods that you wouldn't normally eat too. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's science why that happens because as we're skipping meals throughout the day and we're actually potentially putting ourselves into a, a semi-starvation state, your body is going to release all of these hormones. That's going to make it seem like you can't control yourself when you're eating because it's telling you, you have to replenish, you have to replenish. And we shouldn't get to that point where a semi-starvation where we have to binge. So by paying attention to our hunger and fullness cues and fulfilling our needs calorically throughout the day with balanced whole foods is really the essence of intuitive eating. I love our intuitive eating resource. We talk about the hunger fullness scale. So think of this as a sliding scale from one to 10, where 10 is absolutely overstuffed, like Thanksgiving stuffed, and one is absolutely starving. So it's a great tool that nutrition coaches can use to help their clients start to tune back into these natural cues. And realizing that your brain is 15 minutes behind your belly. So if you're slowing down and being more mindful when you eat, it's also going to help with intuitive eating to realize those hunger and fullness cues. Yeah, absolutely. So people a lot of times ask like, well, how do we use this hunger fullness scale? Like what is, what is the purpose of it? Well, it's pretty easy. You're going to use it as a tool for your clients and you're going to have them start by rating one or two meals a day to see where they fall on the scale. Have them gauge their hunger prior to eating. Before they eat, have them ask, am I hungry? And what is my hunger level? A great time to start eating is when the hunger level is around a three or four. Then with fullness, you want to have them gauge their fullness before ending the meal and then following the meal. Nicole, as you said, our brain is behind our belly. So we're actually going to feel a different level of fullness 15, 20 minutes after finishing versus the level of fullness we feel when we actually stop. The ideal place to end a meal is around a level seven or where you feel comfortably satisfied. Pause and check in during the meal. Have your clients ask themselves, what is my fullness level? Am I actually still hungry? And then make sure again that we're eating consciously and without distractions. One tip I always like to give clients is don't ignore your natural hunger or fullness signs, but keep in mind, again, they're not only felt in your stomach. So fatigue, anxiety, shakiness, loss of focus, gas or indigestion, and headache can all be signs of hunger, as well as reduced desire to eat, not thinking about food, or feeling really more energized all of a sudden can also be your signs of fullness. I think this is a piece of a puzzle that's so often overlooked with nutrition coaches and clients because we assume clients know when they're full 
and really getting back in tune with that, helping them be more mindful, helping them understand where, where do I lie on this scale Mm -hmm. before my meals, during my meals, after my meals is going to help you set up a plan and keep your client accountable. Absolutely. It's a great, great tool. And again, with intuitive eating, this is a great tool and an awesome practice to use, but I think it's very important to note that it might not be a great tool for all of your clients, right? I probably wouldn't use intuitive eating if I have somebody coming in who has a specific athletic goal, right? I might want to give them more of a a structured plan for them to reach that. So just making sure it is appropriate, but I do think it's a great tool to use and a lot of clients will benefit from it. Absolutely. Overarching umbrella, slow down, be in tune to what you're eating, be in tune with your body, like stay connected to the food and you're going to have a positive relationship. The other thing that we talked about in the master habits course (laughs) is building habits. And that's really the foundation of what we believe in how we teach nutrition coaches. It's a habit-based approach, focusing on one thing at a time and not overwhelming clients with too much information. And when you do overwhelm clients, they might be able to stick with something for a couple weeks, but then they're going to feel overwhelmed and they're going to say, this isn't working for me. It's too much. I'm going to go back to my old ways. Yeah. You know, to be honest, your clients don't need another restrictive diet. The key to long-term success is using a sustainable habit-based approach to consistently build healthier routines into their life one step at a time. You know, the the research and the statistics are out there. Um, Two thirds of people who go on a diet and lose weight will actually regain more weight than they initially lost. And I think the, the big overarching concept behind this is that they're doing something really quickly to get a result. And they will. You will lose weight if you're restricting. Once you get that result, you forget everything that just happened and you jump back into your old routines and your old bad habits. Whereas setting a foundation of healthy habits will actually start to intertwine these new habits and these new action steps into your lifestyle. So before no time, being healthy and living healthy and eating healthy becomes second nature to you because you've actually built this into the thread of your daily life. I think it goes back to laying out your client journey. And so many gyms, so many nutrition coaches or people will do a nutrition challenge, change so much over the course of 20 to 30 days, and then they go right back to old habits. But if you lay out the client journey and focus on one thing at a time and lay the expectation that this is going to be a long journey. Like you're not going to be able to lose this weight really, really quickly. And if you do, you're going to regain it. So, you know, when we did that nutrition seminar, we did a nutrition talk not that long ago. And we asked how many people have done a nutrition challenge and regained the weight. And almost every person raised their hand. I think yeah, everybody I could see on the zoom. <laughs> for yeah. sure. And, and it's important to talk about that, right? Like we don't want to set you up to go down that path again. We want to set you up with healthy habits and more, more importantly, the accountability and support to achieve long-term success. Yes, Nicole, absolutely. And you know, you say this all the time, um, a healthy lifestyle and a, a sustainable healthy lifestyle is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And setting that expectation from the beginning will really help your client understand that they're in for the long haul. And set you up for success as a nutrition coach. Absolutely. Right? Because you have to build that relationship with the client and provide them that support accountability to build a relationship with them. Yes, absolutely. So that's why, you know, healthy habits and setting that habit foundation is so, so important. You know, foster a healthy lifestyle, guys, not a restrictive diet. And I think when we're talking about healthy habits, you know, there's a lot more that goes into it besides, you know, exercise and eating well. I think we have to look about our lifestyle and also look into who is our support system. That is such a popular topic. I mean, there's so much research that goes out. You're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. 95% of your success or failure is related to who you spend time with. I mean, that is insane if you think about it. And You know, I think that's one of the reasons why CrossFit gyms are so successful is because they've built a community and it's not just go into the gym, right? It's a, it's a community of people that are there to support each other. And, you know, a lot of these micro gyms have that community. It's not a global gym where you just swipe your card, go in and you do your own thing. It's people that are there to support each other. And on that topic, you know, you have clients that maybe don't have the best support system, at home. Yeah. And and that's unfortunate, but it's a reality, right? Absolutely. We're going to have people who say that, you know, I'm trying real hard. However, my significant other is doing A, B, and C, which is causing me to get off track. I remember working with a kid 
um, this was like right when I started private practice, gosh, I don't know, maybe eight, nine years ago. And she came in, the mom brought her, um, she was wanting her daughter to lose some weight. She was sent by the doctor, right? She was getting a fatty liver at a really young age because of all the carbohydrates, processed foods that she was eating. And we start working on a plan and the mom starts changing the child's diet and, she came in one day and she was upset, the child. She was like, what's wrong? She's like, it's just really hard because whenever we go to McDonald's and the drive through everyone else gets a chicken sandwich and I have to get a salad. And I, my heart broke for her a little bit. Like, of course it's not fair. Like, yeah. you're nine years old. Like, I wouldn't want that either if I was nine. And if every one of my family members was eating a chicken sandwich or whatever they were eating from McDonald's, I, I would be upset too. feels almost like a, a punishment or being outcast, right? Absolutely. And, you know, if you're a parent listening to this um, or a nutrition coach working with kids and parents, like everyone has to be on the same page at home. Everyone has to be on the same page at home. And we talked about that during a kids podcast episode that we did. And even with our kids, like both of us have kids, like they eat very healthy and it's because they don't know any, any different. Because okay, we're all eating the same thing. I don't give them anything else. And if they don't want it, then they can not eat. That's fine. Um, but they're eating and, and everything's great. It's just such an important piece of the puzzle. And when, as a nutrition coach, if you're working with a client that does have someone that's a negative influence or has someone that does all the cooking that's not that client, you have to get that spouse involved in the conversation in some way, shape, or form. Absolutely. You know, I think it really takes – them really looking into their inner circle, who are the five closest people to them and sitting down and taking a moment and working through to see if they're going to help support them in their journey and their goals and their progress, or are they going to inhibit everything that they're working for? And if it's inhibit and you can separate yourself a little bit so you can get in good routines and get in good habits and put someone else, that's going to be a positive influence. Awesome. But the reality is sometimes you have someone that's you can't get rid of. Yeah. And so, and then we understand that it could be a, a pretty hard situation to deal with. So maybe just looking at how much time that you're spending around that person and also making sure that you are keeping your goals first and foremost and still being a friend to them as well. I think too, it's looking, making sure that you're explaining your why. Yes. Absolutely. You know, like if you were my best friend and you really loved going out for pizza every time that we met and that wasn't towards my goals, I'm going to talk to you like, Hey, Ashley, I would love for us to go out to eat when everything opens from COVID. Um, but I want us to go somewhere different because these are my goals and this is why I'm a better person. I feel better. I am, you know, have more energy when I eat you know, this other way, do you mind going somewhere else with me? Yes, right? Absolutely. I mean, same thing goes with you. Ha if you have friends or, you know, your inner circle who, who drink and that's not aligning with your goals. And, you know, every time you go out with them, you're going to be drinking two, three, four drinks. It's really sitting down and kind of working through how can I express what this is doing to my goals and how can I get them on the same page with me to support them or looking at maybe I need to then reevaluate how much time I'm spending with these people. We work with couples all the time. And when couples do nutrition together, they're so much more successful than doing it by themselves because you have an accountability partner. Jason's my accountability partner in most cases. And if I'm going to grab something or he's going to grab something or, you know, that extra layer of support to make sure that that we don't do it and we don't have this stuff in the house. Yes. So it's a lot easier. It's not convenient for us to eat bad because we don't have it in the house. And if your partner is on the same page, it's going to be so much easier to, for you to stick with it. Absolutely. So true. Um, one of the awesome resources that we made for our HSN mentoring clients when looking at you know, who we're surrounding ourselves with and how they are impacting our habits and our progress is the inner circle inventory worksheet. So this is a great tool that they can give to their clients to have them really sit down and work through who they surround themselves with and how they are influencing them, whether negative or positive light. So going through the five people closest to them, understanding how the lifestyle and support either will help support them or they're it's really going to help bring them down, unfortunately, and then evaluating that social influence. So your spheres of influence are so much important than we think. So remember that they're going to really help us with long-term success towards our goals. So I think when it comes down to it, everybody needs a friend, an accountability partner, 
a coach, a neighbor, or a roommate to support them on their journey. And I mean, a nutrition coach is amazing, but we can't be there for everything. So really making sure that those other people that we do have surrounding us are also going to help bring us up. Absolutely. This is a really great resource because so many people don't even realize the positive or negative people around them. We don't take the time to think about it. No. So just kind of drawing light to that. And I think that's why as a nutrition coach, you have to have a holistic approach because just controlling or helping someone control what they eat isn't going to help them really get the whole picture. That is that is so true. Yeah. You have to look at other things outside of just meal plans and, and, and just looking at what they're eating and what they're drinking, their activity, you know, that's just one small part of everyone's lives. Absolutely. The last part of the master habits course was the case studies. We went through a few different case studies and this was good for new nutrition coaches just to ensure everyone's on the same page. Like how would you handle this client? They paused, they went through the client and then we went through how would we handle it? What resources would we give that are available to HS and mentoring clients? Being the director of nutrition education, all of that hard work is helping our nutrition coaches feel more confident and you're putting out so much stuff. One of the coolest things that we're doing now is the monthly nutrition talks for all of our mentoring clients. Love those. And we're even doing partnerships with them now, like sponsorships. And it's really cool. It's something we started during COVID and it's something that we're going to continue doing because it's just been absolutely amazing. All of the partners we've had, all of the, you know, feedback we've had has just been incredible. And I think just getting out there and talking to your community, you know, doing something for them every month, having your face out there, they can see you, they relate to you, you have a different topic. It's really going to have you be out there as the expert. And then when they do need your help and they're ready to come to you, they're going to know where to go. Absolutely. Ashley, one final thing. We have something really awesome coming up, the Nutrition Business Virtual Workshop. I am so excited for this live workshop that it's happening on July 10th. I cannot tell you. So many gyms right now are realizing nutrition is the missing piece. It's been the missing piece. I need to integrate nutrition on day one to really help set my clients up for success. And this is going to give you a great taste of all the stuff that we provide with HSN mentoring clients. All HSN mentoring clients are going to get one free ticket. Every business will get one free ticket. Most of them have already claimed their tickets at this point. We just released it a couple weeks ago and we are starting to open this up to the public now so they can buy a ticket to the nutrition coaching virtual workshop. It's going to be amazing. We have four topics. One of them is uh, on marketing. We have another one talking all about fad diets, which is such a popular topic. So popular. We have another one talking about retention Uh, with your members at your gym or retention with your nutrition clients. And the last topic is talking about scaling your business beyond the walls. Yes. And this is really when I look at the gyms that are bringing in over $100,000 per year in nutrition only, it's the ones that have built successful corporate wellness and nutrition programs and leveraging partnerships. And we're going to really be diving into this step-by-step process on how to do it. Yes. It's going to be great, guys. Highly recommend you attend. There's two tracks, owner's track and coach's track. Essentially, all the same presentation material is going to be delivered with both tracks. It's just the breakout rooms uh, are going to be dispersed based on owners versus coaches. So you're going to be able to decide, do you want the owner's track or the coach's track? We're only selling 400 tickets because I want to make sure, although it it's live streamed. We could have thousands of people on it if we wanted to. I want to make sure those breakout rooms are super valuable for people, right? Like we want to make sure that there's... There's someone from the HSN mentoring leadership team in every breakout room. We want to make sure that that people, attendees, get the best application for all of this knowledge. I think there's so many times where you go to a conference and you listen to all this stuff, but you don't really take the time to apply it to your business. Like, how can I take this and have actionable steps to help build my business? And, and this is what we'll be able to do with the Nutrition Coaching Virtual Workshop. Yes. I, guys, I am so excited about this. I highly recommend that you come. We cannot wait. And going to be a blast. Absolutely. So Ashley, thank you for talking all about intuitive eating and mindfulness. It's such a a great thing that we should all be practicing and helping our clients with. Uh, Let's go get ready for this virtual nutrition workshop. Let's do it. Stress management and mindfulness is key when looking at supporting our clients in a holistic approach. If you found this episode helpful, You do not want to miss the Nutrition Business Virtual Workshop on Friday, July 10th. This is a one-day epic event that's going to consist of presentations, application, 
and breakout sessions led by the HSN Mentoring Leadership Team. Every business running the HSN Mentoring Platform can claim one free ticket to the workshop. Tickets are on sale now for the public. You can lock in your spot today and finally commit to building nutrition as a core offering in your business. Go to growyournutritionbusiness.com and purchase your ticket for the Nutrition Business Virtual Workshop today.